Hello everybody, Adam here once again with another video lesson. In this one we're going to demonstrate how to bind the new HTML5 progress bar to an actual JavaScript progressive event. Lots of people know how to place the progress bar on their page maybe. Any small child with a keyboard could do that. But very few people know how to tie that new HTML5 progress bar to an actual JavaScript progressive event. So we're going to try and change all that right now to where everybody knows how to tie these new HTML5 things to JavaScript events that take place. Down the rabbit hole we go. Before we begin building, let's take a look at the finished product so you see exactly what you'll be learning. And like always, I will have the complete script for you guys to snatch up if needed at developphp.com and the link will be in the video's description. So let's go to File. Preview and Browser. Now keep in mind you have to choose the correct browser here because 2014 is the standardized release date for HTML5 so it might not work in some of the browsers that you try it in. I'm going to try it in Google Chrome. I already tried it in Firefox and it worked in that one too. But I'll run it in Google Chrome. Okay, so when the task progress gets to 100%, we update some element that we want on the page letting the user know that the process is complete. And this is all done with the new HTML5 progress element and JavaScript tied to that element. Let's start with the good old HTML and body tags. And we'll go down one line and we're going to open up a new progress tag. New HTML5 progress tag. And let's go ahead and close it off. Now within the opening tag of the progress element, we're going to type in space ID. And we'll put equals whatever you want to name it. Let's name it progress bar. Now let's put in another space. And this attribute we're going to place in this time is called value, and that's equal to zero. That's what it's going to start at. That's its low end. And upon completion, it will hit its max, which we will set at 100. Now these are user-defined values, so you can set any values you want in there. But for most general purposes, and for like uploading images or media files, you would have this at a max of 100. All right, so let's press Control S and preview it in the browser. OK, so you see what that gives me? is a nice bar. Now if I change this value to 50, you'll see that the bar gets halfway filled and that's lovely. Okay, so let's go back to zero with that. Now what I want to do is make my bar a little bit longer because I don't like the default length of it. You see how long it is? The width? I don't like the default width. So I'm going to put a style attribute. Style equal to, and let's set the width. The width colon the number for what we want the width to be we can set it at 300 px for pixels all right now let's see what we get that gives us a longer bar so you can see you can set it to be any size you want and you can also set the height if you want so let's make that maybe 44 pixels it'll be a big beefy bar press control s run it in the browser and you have a big giant beefy bar and let's put a value in there just so you can see it real good 50 control s f12 there you go that gives you a big giant beefy bar. Really the default size is nice. I'll just leave mine default. Okay, now the progress tag, the progress element, is all ready to go. The next line, we're going to type in span. This is going to be a span element with an ID of status. Because this is the element that I'm going to use to hold the number to show visually on the page to the person next to the bar. It's going to hold the number. And I'll just name this status. So the ID attribute has a value of status. So not only will I have a bar, I'm going to have a number right next to the bar that also represents the progressive event. Now let's make sure we close off that span tag. We don't have to put anything in it. And the last thing we're going to do is a simple H1 tag. And inside of that H1, let's close that off. Now in the opening tag, I'm going to type in a space and put ID of final message. So it makes good sense. There you go. You don't have to put anything in that either. Our JavaScript is going to put things in that for us. All right, so let's go right under the H1 tag and let's pop in some JavaScript. Now, I'm not putting my JavaScript in the head tag just for the simple demonstration because I don't want to have to program an onload event and all kind of things like that. And usually when you're doing a progressive event like this, it would be user initiated. So your whole page would be loaded before they do anything anyway. The only reason I'm putting my JavaScript underneath these elements is so I don't have to run a uh, window.onload. It just, you know, it skips that step for me. But it's important to remember that in a normal situation, it would be a user-initiated JavaScript function. I mean, your progress bar wouldn't be like mine and just start going when the page loads up. 
when the person comes to your page, there's not going to be a progress bar just going on it, is there? No, it's a user initiated event. Now I'm going to pop in the JavaScript that I custom coded for this example. Now all I did was basically, here let me close this up before I start explaining. That way the function is closed and there's not too much complicated stuff to look at right now before I explain it. So what I did was I took JavaScript's ability to animate things and for this simple example I wanted to just tie JavaScript progressive event to that progress bar. So this function that I'm about to explain and the one method uh, set time out that's inside of it is really all about animation. Now your functionality of your progressive event would probably be when somebody uploads something. Okay now that being said let me show you what's going on in this function. The first thing we do is before this function runs actually that function is just sitting there laying waiting and it's not gonna run right when your page loads unless you tell it to which this line right here tells it to. So right before I tell that function to run, I create a variable called amount loaded and that's set to zero. Okay? So basically all I've done in JavaScript so far is I've made an amount loaded variable with a value of zero and then I run my progress bar simulator function with that amount loaded uh, zero value loaded into it. And that, you see that function progress bar simulator is right here. So progress bar sim has one argument coming into it which is amount loaded so I just made it short to AL that way within the function you have access to that number so now let's look at all the code the meat inside of the function Now the first thing we're gonna do is create two variables the first variable name is bar next one is status and you know what they represent this one represents the status element we put on the page here and this one represents the progress bar element and we get those by saying document dot get element by ID and you designate the element that you want to target on the page. So we get those wrapped up into nice little variables for easier use within our script. Because you see how I'm using status right here and bar right here. I don't have to put all this junk on each one of these lines where I'm using those. I can just put the little word. That's why we create variables. Okay, so status.innerHTML property is being affected and we're making it equal to the number AL which at first is going to be zero and we put a percent symbol right next to it so this status span right here will have zero and a percent symbol placed into it as the first action because amount loaded is set to zero down here so that will be the first action and it will be such a split second thing you probably won't even see it and actually when this function loops this AL number keeps changing so that's how you get to see a progressive event and this number goes from 1 all the way to 100 now the bar we are targeting document dot get element dot by ID progress bar here we're giving that a value we're setting its value attribute to that number AL so remember how we put the number 50 here actually this needs to be set back to 0 but this is the value attribute right here and you can set that in JavaScript it doesn't have to be just a static thing when you code your pages you can use JavaScript to change that at any moment you want. So we're saying bar dot value is equal to AL, whatever AL happens to be at that particular pass through this function. Now the next thing we do is we increment the AL number. So the number that AL represents gets incremented right here by signifying plus plus on it. So if it's a 1, it becomes a 2 when this line runs. If it's a 97, it becomes a 98 when this line runs. Now this next line here is the magic of my little animator script. So this variable called sim, and I just named it sim short for simulator, is equal to the set timeout method in JavaScript. Now actually let me run this, press F12. Now you'll see it's running now, but what I want to do is show you that this number is milliseconds. So if I had, and I'm running it at 300 milliseconds, that's how fast my thing is going to loop my little animation. So if I set this to 1000, that becomes every second. Once every second, that progressive event is going to increment and make my bar get bigger and change that number, yada, yada, yada. So if you wanted to move fast, you put that sucker on like 20 and watch it fly. See? Now the way this animates is set timeout calls a function called progress bar sim to run every 300 milliseconds and guess what that 
progress bar sim function is. It's the one we're in right now. So it's just looping on itself, this, uh, this progress bar sim function. And we're looping it on itself by using set timeout here. Now here's the last thing. It's a little if condition. This is the if condition that we set up to listen for the ending or the completion of the progressive event. Okay, so now that we know that AL is going to start at zero here and work its way all the way up to 100, we can listen for and put an evaluation in place to say if AL is equal to 100, then we know everything's finished and we can update that status span here and put in 100%. And then the bar value we can finalize to a setting of 100. And then we simply clear timeout for our sim set timeout method. That way that won't run anymore. And this just pertains to my animation. So if you want to know how to animate in JavaScript, there you go. It animates my little thing until it gets to a point when I don't want it to animate anymore and I chose to use this value getting to 100 to make this little simulation for you. Now this last thing is very simple. You just say document I get element by ID, target the final message ID element here, which is an H1 tag, and you affect its inner HTML property you make it to a value that's equal to process is complete and that's it guys that's how it works it's very simple now let me explain once again that my function here is just a simple animating function what it does is it uses set timeout and it loops on itself and then I have this if condition in place if it gets to a certain point then I just simply stop my animation now let me reiterate that yours would more likely and in most common situations you would be using this to show how much of a file has been uploaded to the user. You wouldn't have just some animation like I have. But that's how you tie it to JavaScript. And that was the whole point of this video lesson was to show you guys how to tap in and tie JavaScript progressive events, whatever they may be, to that progress bar, that new HTML5 progress bar element.